up uh, torquing all of our head bolts and We did put ARP studs in the motor and pulled them to 140 pounds. That's actually more than ARP says to pull, and they say 125, but uh, Justin at r and IDI, who I trust his opinion, he pulls his to 150. So we decided we'd go 140, and I uh, don't believe we're going to have any problems with uh, lifting heads. So I've got uh, 15 of the lifters in. We have disassembled and cleaned every lifter. I was going to show you putting one of them together. Uh, these motors do have needle bearing um, roller lifters and I've already cleaned this one so we're going to put a couple just a couple drops of oil down in there put a plunger in and make sure it feels good this has been a tedious process Sit here and put some pressure on it, put the clip in. And you want to make real sure that that clip went in all four corners. And then we'll put our red line assembly lube. Try to get some down in down in the rollers, just so nothing's starting up dry. And we had also put this on our cam, so it, it's going to be nice and lubed. Okay, and before I start putting the dog bones on, I'm going. to Take a light and just look and make sure that every clip is seated. Okay. Of course, these dog bones are what keep the lifters from rotating. And I think they call this the spider. What it looks like. Yeah, actually, I know this is absolute overkill, but I'm going to put a dab of red line on those. It's not going to hurt anything. bolts hold that down and put just a little loctite on this is not something that you want to come loose
next step will be putting in push rods and rocker arms. We'll stop right here. Okay, we're, uh, we're assembling our valve train. Um, we've already put everything in except one cylinder. We're not gonna bore you with all that. Uh, basically, when we put our push rods in, um, we dipped them in red line assembly lube on the ball ends in the bottom. And these push rods are different from one end to the other. If they're, if they're fairly stock, they have a gold tip on top that goes up on the uh, rocker arm. But you can look at the wear pattern on them if they're used and tell, tell what they are. Um, and then we take and put, uh, we put red line on the valve contact point and then where the push rods go. And this is a fully non-adjustable valve train, so you just torque, torque them down and everything's good to go. So now all we gotta do is go around and torque all of these and then we can start working on the intake gasket. Okay, we're back in the shop today. Um, got a mess out here, but made a little bit of progress. We, uh, since my last video, we got the engine buttoned up, got the intake on, and uh, the valve covers are just sitting on there right now, but they're ready to, to bolt down. I'll do that at, uh, uh, right before we get ready to run it, just in case we have to do anything else on the valve train. Um, also, I didn't mention this before, um, we welded a bung in the oil pan for an oil temp sender in case I decide to add that later. Uh, I made sure that was a, a clear spot in the truck where it wouldn't be any problem to, to do that. So if we don't use it, it's no big deal. Got it plugged off. Uh, injectors that are in it are just dummies, just keeping dirt out of the holes. Um, I also wanted to mention this, uh, this valley pan right here is the intake gasket and it also seals up the valley pan and right now those things are made of unobtainium um, ever since covid um, it's just been impossible to get one of those uh, i don't know if Phil pro will ever make any more um, i've seen them uh, online as high as 750 dollars for a kit that has the valley pan gasket and a few turbo gaskets um, so anyway, it's, uh, it's crazy. So if you, if you're taking one of these motors apart, be real careful taking that out. You can reuse them if they're not just trashed or rusted out. Um, I've done it. Um, use the Ford, uh, the Motorcraft gray sealer, uh, right here. And you can, uh, you can use them. So, um, guard them like they're gold. Uh, interesting story when we went to Kentucky to buy this motor uh, to build. Uh, had the motor loaded, had the guy paid. He just a, a nice older gentleman, had a bunch of bunch of junk and a bunch of cars around his place. And I just said something in conversation about, you know, it's really hard to find parts for these now and you can't buy an intake gasket. And he said, well, I think I've got a brand new intake gasket for one of these, you want it? And I'm like, yes, please. So um, this is actually a new gasket that he come, he come bringing it out of the shop. Uh, it had. Uh, laid on the shelf and had a little surface rust in the, the valley part, which is no big deal. We wire brushed that off and cleaned it and painted it. And the gasket surfaces were perfect. Gasket never been used. So that was worth the trip. Uh, so anyway, um, I've been trying to figure out when we put this on the run stand, how I was going to run the water pump. And uh, cause this, uh, my engine uses a serpentine drive system and I've actually got a complete extra serpentine system that I was going to go ahead and put most of the, the brackets and pulleys and everything on before we swap the engine and just keep the, the engine that's in the truck as complete as possible. But, you know, you don't want to put the whole serpentine drive system on just so the one belt can turn the water pump. And then it dawned on me that I had a complete V belt system for a 6.9. Um, so I got to digging some things out and all I need for that is the two pulleys and the alternator. And so put that on temporarily. I've just got to make a tensioner, um, the tensioner bolts to another bracket, I think. And so I'm just going to make a quick, a quick tensioner, catch one of these bolts over here. And uh, that'll be fine to run water pump on the engine stand. We've got an electric fan on the run stand. 
uh, which should be fine. Uh, we're just going to be idling the motor and run it through some heat cycles. Uh, so I don't think we'll have any problem cooling it. We're not going to be working it hard. Still got a lot of work to do to modify this to accept that engine. We basically do small block forwards here. So that's what that stand is configured for. But uh, I think we can, I think we can make it work. So that's one of the next, next things, next things to do. Um, we've got uh, an old set of motor mounts already bolted on and they're sandblasted. So they'll weld clean and we can weld some uh, brackets to them to uh, bolt it on the stand. Now, if you'll notice, uh, I don't have the oil cooler on it yet. That's what these two shiny spots with all the holes. And I've got oil cooler here. Uh, I've torn down three oil coolers and clean, and man, they're awful to clean. Um, cleaned, inspected, picked out some of the best pieces I had, uh, re-o-ringed them. Um, we used the o-ring kit from uh, Russ Repair. Uh, he seems to sell one of the better uh, kits and I've got to pressure test this thing. So we've got this plate That we sawed out a quarter inch plate and drilled and tapped all the holes to bolt this thing down And I've got gaskets on it So What we've got to do now is um, Fix a way to connect some compressed air to the oil side and the coolant side and then immerse this thing in water and see if you know we have any bubbles or anything and all of this is outlined in the factory service manual so i've still got a little research to do on that before i do it might show a video about it uh just depends on how how it works out and when we do it but uh, i definitely want to pressure test that thing if i can if uh, if these things leak you start mixing depending on how they leak you start mixing coolant in the oil and oil in the coolant um, or just have external leaks which the external leaks would be the lesser of evils but anyway um, I want to know that this thing is is good and um, before we uh, before we fire it up so anyway <clears throat> that's where we're at right now uh, probably the next video or the next portion of this video will see us uh, start adapting this thing to the uh, to the run stand uh, I've also got, uh, I got to um, build and, or clean and rebuild and shim and pop test these injectors. This is a set of G-code injectors. I have another set I've already done. We put those in the current motor a couple days ago just for troubleshooting and they, they run great. We'll probably put those back in this motor, um, but I want to, I want to go back through these um, I've, I've cleaned and shimmed these once before and, and run them most of this year, but they've dropped a little bit in pop pressure. So I'm going to go back through them again and, and shim them up where I want them. And these will be good to uh, use on the run stand. Um, so anyway, that'll probably be the next segment of the video is us getting this over on the run stand and start working out some of the fuel lines and get the injector pump on and, and everything, get it ready to run.